Hello students, we are going to start our new chapter, circles. This is the 10th chapter of grade 10. You have studied about circles a lot. You have studied about circles in your initial classes, right? And also seen circular objects all around, your favorite pizza. This is a circle and let me mark the center of the circle. This is C, the center of the circle. This is any point on the circle, let me mark as A, right? So. The circle is a collection of all the points, these are the points, the collection of all the points in a plane which are at constant distance, constant distance from a fixed point, this is called the center of the circle. So and the fixed distance is called, CA is called the radius of the circle. So a circle is a collection of all the points in a plane which are at a constant distance from the fixed point. So, let us move forward, what are the parts of the circle what we need to study? These are the parts of the circle we have already studied. This is the center, let me mark as O, O is the center of the circle and let me mark as P and Q. These are the two points on the circle. So what is the diameter of the circle? This is P, Q. The two points, the end points are P and Q and it is passing through one fixed point that is the center O. So diameter is a line segment joining the end points of the circle and passing through the center of the circle and this is the radius. Let me mark this as R. So what is the radius? Radius is O R, the fixed distance from the center to the circle. This is the radius. These are the three points what we have studied in our initial classes. We will move forward. We will see the relationship between a line and a circle. Here we see a line and this is a circle. Here the line and the circle are not intersecting. They are wide apart. They are not touching each other. So this is case 1 wherein we have 0 point of contact. Now as the line move forward we have the line is touching the circle. The line is touching the circle at one point. Let me name this as P. This point is point of contact of the line and the circle and then as we move forward, we move the point inside the circle. Then we have two points of contact that is P and Q. We have two points of contact of the circle. So what we find? The relation between the line and the circle, we have three cases. The first case, non-intersecting the line is not intersecting the circle, right? The second case, the line is intersecting the circle only once. We have this as a tangent. This is a tangent wherein the line PQ is intersecting the circle at one point A, at one point A. Now, as we move forward, we have two intersecting points. The points are A and B and this is called a secant, there is some difference between a secant and a chord. This is a circle and let me mark two points P and Q. Then PQ is a chord, this is a chord and there is a difference between a chord and a secant. What is the difference? Secant is a line, you can see this, two arrows, so secant is a line whereas a chord is a line segment, chord is a part of a secant, it is not a secant, it is a part of a secant. So we find a difference between a chord and a secant. But now we are going to study about tangents, right? What is a tangent? This is a circle and a point O. We have a line, let me name this as X and Y. This x, y is touching the circle at a point P, right? And what are the number of contacts? 1. The point of contact is 1. The word tangent comes from the word tangere, which means to touch. It is touching the circle, right? And was introduced by the Danish mathematician Thomas Finicke in 1853. 
remember this and then a tangent what is the tangent definition of the tangent the tangent to a circle is a line that intersects the circle at only one point at only one point this is named as p so number of tangents how many tangents can you draw from one point number of tangents from one point of the circle here is the one point p this is one point on the circle right you can see how many lines so many lines can be drawn from this one point so many lines can be drawn now this is another line one line this is the second line this is the third line this is the fourth line how many lines can you a number of lines right now we can see that this line has two points two points on the circle again number two line this has two points on the circle but if we see line number four how many point of contact only one so how many tangents can you draw only one the tangent to a circle is a special type of a secant this is a secant and the end points coincide the end points are coinciding with each other and they form a tangent so there is only one tangent at the point on the circle one tangent this is one tangent let me name as p and q so we have only one tangent so the common point of the tangent and the circle this is a circle we have center o of the circle and this is a tangent let me name this as x and y what is p it is a point wherein the circle and the tangent are touching so the common point of the tangent and the circle is called the point of contact it is called the point of contact and the tangent is set to touch the circle here it is just touching the circle see here is touching the circle at the common point so p is the common point of the tangent and the circle and is called the point of contact this is theorem 10.1 the tangent at any point of the circle is perpendicular to the radius through the point of contact this is the circle with center o this is the center o and x y this is a tangent and p is the point of contact p is the point of contact and what does the theorem say theorem says that o p is perpendicular to x y op the radius is perpendicular to xy the tangent at the point of contact p what is this let us see first let us join oq what is q q is any point other than p on xy q is any point we can take q here also we can take q here also any point on xy other than p so we have a circle with center o and a tangent xy at the point p what we need to prove is op is perpendicular to xy let us take a point q on xy other than p and join oq we have joined oq now oq is greater than op why why is oq greater than op we see that op is the radius so this is also the radius this is also the radius why radius is the distance between the center and any point on the circle and now again if i take any point outside the circle like q is any point outside the circle then this distance oq will be greater than the radius oq is greater than op why op is a radius so op is the shortest distance why again it is the shortest distance because op is the radius and the shortest distance is always a perpendicular so op is perpendicular to oq i hope it is clear op is perpendicular to oq we know a relation between a line and a circle now we have a point and a circle there are three cases again we have a point inside the circle we have a point on the circle and we have a point outside the circle three cases we have a point inside the circle on the circle outside the circle let me see the first case when we have the point inside the circle can we draw a tangent when a point is inside the circle we can draw a number of lines we can draw a number of lines but is there any tangent no we don't have any tangent 
on the circle when the point is inside the circle. Let us see the second case. The second case is when the point is on the circle. We have already studied that. How many tangents can we draw? We can draw only one tangent. We can draw as many lines as we want, but there is only one tangent. One tangent, this one. So, we have only one tangent to the circle when the point is on the circle. Let us see the case third. We have point outside the circle. How many tangents can we draw? We can draw as many points, as many lines, right? But we have only two tangents. This is one tangent and this is the second tangent. So, we have two tangents to the circle when the point is outside the circle. So, we have three cases. I hope it is clear now. What is the length of the tangent? P is a point outside the circle and from point outside the circle, we can make two tangents. P A is one tangent, P A and P B is the second tangent and A is a point on the circle, B is a point, another point on the circle. Again, we have P A and P B as two tangents. So, what is the length of the tangent? Distance from P to A, distance from P to B, this is the length of the tangent. So, P A is the length of the tangent. In other words, P B is the length of the tangent. In words, we can say the length of the segment of the tangent from the external point P and the point of contact with the circle is called the length of the tangent, right? This is the length of the tangent. This is the length of the tangent. I hope it is clear. Let us move forward to theorem 10.2. The length of the tangent drawn from an external point. What is an external point? P to a circle are equal. What do you mean by this? The question says P Q is equal to P R, right? P is an external point and Q and R are points of contact, wherein P Q is one tangent and P R is another tangent. So, what is given? Given is a circle with center O, a circle with center O, a point P lying outside the circle, two tangents from the point P on the circle and what we have to prove? We have to prove that P Q is equal to P R. The first step, first step is let us join O P, let us join O Q and let us join O R, right? We are joining the three O P, O Q and O R. Now, this angle P Q O, this angle, this angle, what is this? This is a right angle. Why? We have studied earlier. When a radius is touching this tangent, then this angle is a right angle, a 90 degree angle. This is a 90 degree angle. Similarly, angle P R O, this is again 90 degree angle. So, we have angle P Q O is equal to angle P R O these two angles are equal. Also, we know that O Q is equal to O R. Why are these two equal? Because they are the radii of the same circle and O P is equal to O P. Again, why? Because they are common. So, by R H S, we have this triangle congruent to this triangle. The two triangles are congruent. Since the two triangles are congruent, we can say that P Q is equal to P R, P Q is equal to P R and this is what we have to prove. I hope it is clear. Only one concept that radius is making a right angle with the tangent. Only this concept you have to remember. So, I hope you have understood the concepts of this session. Please practice questions from the NCRT. Thank you.